Well, here's another try at the second of three videos for the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. I gather I forgot to turn the microphone back on the first time I made this one. So all I want to do is derive a formula that will help us with applications. At the top of the page, I've put lots and lots of rewrites of 1 over p plus 1 over q equals 1, almost all of which we'll need. And I have also developed a differentiation formula that you may never have seen before, one for the pth power of the absolute value of x. Of course, this function with p greater than 1 is not differentiable at x equals 0, but everywhere else it is. And the way to get the answer is to note that the absolute value of x is the sine of x, that's the sigmum function sine, times x. If x is different from 0, the sine function is constant, plus 1 for positive x, minus 1 for negative x. And uh, so its derivative, the derivative of the absolute value function, is the sigmum function. Now let's apply the chain rule, differentiating absolute value of x to the p. We get p times absolute value of x to the p minus 1 times the derivative of the absolute value function, which is SGN of x. We'll use that below. Now let's go down to part a. This is my own clever rewrite of a formula that Leuenberger independently derives in several different places. I'm going to express f of x as alpha over p times the absolute value of x to the pth power, where alpha is positive. If we think about a linear functional, then the linear functional, x star acting on x, can be represented by a real number y. It's just y times x. And what we want to find is the supremum of y times x minus this f of x. How do we do it? We differentiate with respect to x, of course. Get y minus, using our new differentiation rule, alpha times absolute of x to the p minus 1 times the sine of x, and we set that equal to 0. Now, alpha is positive. The absolute value of x raised to any power is going to be positive. And therefore, we conclude that y must have the same sign as x. And that lets us figure out not only the magnitude of x, which is clearly y over alpha to the 1 over p minus 1 power, but to get the sign correct by multiplying by SGN of y. Look at the handy dandy formulas at the top. The bottom one tells us that 1 over p minus 1 is q minus 1. So we now have a more convenient form for x, sine of y times y over alpha to the q minus 1. Now we know where the supremum is achieved. Let's find its value. y times x is y times the value we just calculated. But y times the sine of y is the absolute value of y. So we have absolute value of y now to the q times alpha to the 1 minus q. We have to subtract off alpha over p times the absolute value of x to the p. Absolute value of x is y over alpha to the q minus 1. But q minus 1 times p is conveniently just q. So we get alpha over p times y over alpha to the qth power. That's got a 1 over p in it. Absolute of y to the q times alpha to the 1 minus q. And what do you know? When we combine the two terms, they have different coefficients. The first one, a coefficient of 1. The second one, a coefficient of minus 1 over p. But 1 minus 1 over p is 1 over q. And there's our answer. Alpha to the 1 minus q times 1 over q times the absolute value of y to the q. Notice this operation is not linear. If you were to say multiply f of x by 2, you would not multiply f star by 2. Now we can apply the same rule backwards. Take our formula for f star, 
And now instead of alpha, we have alpha to the 1 minus q. And we're using q where we used p before. So what's the answer? Well, this alpha to the 1 minus q has to be raised to the 1 minus p power. 1 over q, absolute of y to the q, gets replaced by 1 over p, absolute of x to the p. But 1 minus q times 1 minus p is 1. We get back alpha times 1 over p times the absolute value of x to the p. And recover our original f of x. We'll be able to use this rule again and again in doing applications of Fenchel duality. Let's extend it a little bit further. Uh, this result is proved on page 197 of Leuenberger. And notice here, x is a vector with components called x1, x2, on up through xn. y has components y1 through yn. And we've got a function f of x, which is alpha over p. This is my way of rewriting it, times the sum of x sub i, absolute value, to the pth power sum from i equals 1 to n. Now, I said this function isn't linear. But here, the function in question is the sum of terms, each involving a different variable. One term for x1, one for x2, and so on. And when we calculate the conjugate functional, we end up doing the computation of the supremum independently for each of these variables. And therefore, the answer is just the sum of the terms we got by the formula on the previous page. It's alpha to the 1 minus q times 1 over q times the sum of the absolute value of yi to the q. Leuenberger actually goes ahead and proves over two or three pages the rule that I have now illustrated several times, namely that if you calculate the conjugate functional and then apply the same operation again, you get the functional that you started with. So here's just a summary of the results. The domain, C star, of the conjugate functional is everything in the dual space x star for which the supremum of x star acting on x minus f of x exists in the sense that there is some bound on this quantity that it doesn't diverge to plus infinity. And the convex functional f star of x star is that supremum provided we're in the domain where it exists. I actually proved that c star and f star are convex. And I proved that, no, I didn't prove it, but Leuenberger does. The region above the graph is convex. I proved that for the more general case of a convex functional and a convex set, though. Finally, what I didn't prove is that if the region above the gra graph is a closed set, we form f star and c star, and then take the conjugate of that. We recover both the functional f and the domain c that we started with. That finishes this short video. And I hope when I listen to it that there's some sound there. <laughs>